Is this the beginning of the end? Okay, maybe that's a little bit dramatic, but today we are talking about the Carolina Hurricanes. They've already clinched themselves a playoff spot. They're flying high in the Metropolitan Division. They're one of the only good teams, honestly, in that spot. But when it comes to the Hurricanes, they made headlines yesterday as they played off against the Boston Bruins. They lost the game, yes, and now they're actually going to set to play against the Washington Capitals in about 20 minutes or so, but part of why I'm making this video is not because the Hurricanes are a team that I like to cover and I like to go over the results of their games and Hurricanes fans are going to be tuning in because they want my post-game review of the Boston Bruins Hurricanes game. No, that's really not it. In fact, I'm not too sure many Hurricanes fans will even watch this video because it's going up around the same time as this game, but I do know who is going to watch this video. Montreal Canadiens fans. Because yesterday, against the Boston Bruins, the Hurricanes iced themselves a lineup that did not include a healthy Jesperi Kotkaniemi. Rod Brindamore confirms pre-game that Freddie Anderson will start, Jesper Foss, who has missed six games due to an upper body injury, will draw back in, and KK was the odd man out. Healthy, scratch, extra guy. And there were some replies going out there and asking, how long does Jesperi Kotkaniemi last in Carolina? He's starting to look like a bust. Starting? They might buy him out this summer considering his age. The buyout is an option, I think. It's $850,000 for 12 years. And two years into a new contract, probably this will go down as one of the biggest fails. I mean, look, one scratch isn't going to go out there and change the entire narrative on a player. I'm a big believer in saying that we have to wait for patterns to emerge and seeing how things respond after Jesperi Kotkaniemi gets scratched. How does he come back? How does he play afterwards? But the thing is, even though the Hurricanes lost this game against Boston, KK is still going to be a scratch tonight against the Washington Capitals. Now, we know that this team, back-to-backs are never easy, so this team has it out for them, this tall task playing off against the Capitals team that is fighting for their playoff lives. But there was an extra response here. Ryan Henkel asked Rod Brindamore, is there any particular reason, production or off-puck play, why Kotkaniemi is the odd man out, but he didn't have anything to say. Too many guys and we're all finally healthy. That's it. And this is an answer, but it's not really an answer, because the question was, what's the particular reason, you know? Like, he sucks with the puck on his stick, his production is lower, he can't make any plays, he's looking lackadaisical, what exactly is it about his game that pulled him back? And the answer is no, there's nothing about him in particular, it's just the rest of the team were finally healthy. Okay, what does that really mean? What do the other guys have over KK? We don't know. So Rod Brindamore is not showing his cards. He's not giving the media insight as to what he's thinking in regards to Kotkaniemi. I mean, there are some replies. It's pretty simple. His lackluster play has been clear as day, especially with Kuznetsov as the second line center. If you wanted to go to Jesperi Kotkaniemi and see his entire profile, I don't want to say the numbers are like the absolute worst thing imaginable. 25 points in 75 games played, that's about a point every three games. But if you look at his recent stint, I mean, one point in his last however many games played this is, four, eight, uh... Is that 11 games played, one point in his last 10, one point in his last five. He's got a few stints here where he absolutely went cold, multiple, zero goal, zero assist stretches for weeks on end. It's just for a $4.8 million guy, this isn't what you want. And especially for a player who is as young as Kotkaniemi is, you want to believe in the future, you want to believe in the potential that he has to get better and to actually become that... I guess even like 50 or 60 points is the ceiling now, right? If you wanted to be bullish on Jesperi Kotkaniemi, you're probably thinking about him as a second line, defensively minded, two-way center who gets 60 points in a season in his prime. Maybe like six years ago, we thought differently, 
six years ago when he was out producing Alexander Barkov in his rookie season, we were like, yeah, he could maybe become a maybe 80 point guy if he becomes a number one center like Alex Barkov because he outproduced the guy. Like, there was that reasonable way to expect Jesperi Kotkaniemi to grow, but it's been six years and now he's having a season that's worse than his rookie year when he was 18. This has been a travesty of a development for one of the top prospects in the 2018 NHL draft because now he's getting scratched twice in a row and we're starting to see some responses as to what this could mean for KK in the future. Before we go over that though, let's go over to some of the Carolina Hurricanes fan responses when Kotkaniemi was scratched yesterday. I can't say it's entirely undeserved, but it feels surreal. Hopefully this lights a fire under KK. I know he can be an impact player. He can be. He has been his whole career. No idea why this dude got such a massive contract. Hopefully they see something that we don't. When I say he can be, I mean he has shown it. He was incredible after the midway point of last season and throughout the playoffs. Another comment says, sucks, but it had to be done. The guy is so snake bitten, he just fell off an entire cliff and it's still falling. Let's go, KK. Ignite and cause some chaos after this one, buddy. At least he's signed on for another hundred years. Yeah, it sucks, but we all saw this coming from a mile away. KK has been invisible. He doesn't really have fourth line grinded out style. He needs to contribute. Hopefully he wakes up for the playoffs. Light of fire, KK, I believe. Pretty overdue, in my opinion. I'm getting worried he's just not capable of figuring it out at this level. Hopefully this lights a fire under his behind. He's definitely on thin ice, and the way he's performed, he probably should be. That's not a fun contract for someone who produces as little as he does. His drop-off after October is fascinating to me. The dude just nosedived and plateaued at the bottom. I forgot where I read this, but I believe if we buy him out before next season, the cap penalty is very minimal, like less than a million dollars a year. I could see that being an endgame with all of our pending contracts. And this is partly why I wanted to make this video too. Like, I mean, I get it, you know, you're laughing. You spirit caught Kinyemi's a healthy scratch night and you're laughing, Robert De Niro says to Joaquin Phoenix. But when it comes to the Yasperi Kotkaniemi buyout conversation, that actually is something that I think is worth considering because he's under the age of 24. Because he is that young, his buyout isn't as bad as if his buyout was when he was older. Here is the buyout calculator here, buyout current contract. The penalty that the Carolina Hurricanes would incur is in the pretty cheap range of $455,000 in some years and a max of $835,000 other years. It will go until 2036, but... That's not that bad, right? I mean, if they buy him out a little bit later, then, I mean, it would be a bit worse. But for now, because he's in this age range, uh, it's pretty good, right? They would be saving a whole bunch of money. 3.9 mil, 3.9 mil, 4 mil in some years. And then they'd only incur this $835,000 penalty for six seasons in the 2030s. So do you consider very legitimately a Jesperi Kotkaniemi buyout? This is where we go from here, eh? This is it. Jesperi Kotkaniemi drafted third overall, offer sheet extravaganza with the Carolina Hurricanes, he signs a lucrative extension, and now he's disappointing, and now people are talking about buyouts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Jesperi Kotkaniemi and what the future holds for him. If any Hurricanes fans want to chime in, then hey, feel free to do so. The comment section is your floor. Although I do think that a lot of the people that will watch this video, just based off of my audience, yeah, it's probably going to be Canadians fans. So, Habs fans, what are your thoughts on KK's development so far? And do you think it's going down the right path? I hope you enjoyed this. Vidishashwal 99. And, bye.